Yeah. Now that we have at least three of us here, maybe some more will come, maybe not, we don't know. But anyway, <laughs> welcome Melanie and welcome Pat to the Kingdom Way. Melanie was just asking me how my week went and it was good. It was a good week. And it takes, it's quite a long day though. Yeah. In some of the days, it's just really Wednesdays and Thursdays are booked solid from the moment I wake up at five, six o'clock in the morning until I go to sleep at about eight, eight thirty. And it's nonstop. Those, but some of the other days are not that busy, so it kind of balances out. <laughs> That's a great attitude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Melanie, how has your week gone? My week has gone pretty good. I, I, um, I don't have anything startling to report except for good is good, I guess. <laughs> That's a good week then. You don't want anything startling to report <laughs> unless, you know, money fell from heaven or something like that. That's, that would be startling. Yeah, but, no, every day's good. I'm still following a real, we call it brighter. I call it abstinent, but I still have a good abstinent program going. And I started um, a satisfied, it's called Satisfied. It's a 90 day food recovery uh, Christ Center program, but it's a 12 step program. And I started that maybe, I think I'm halfway through. I think this is about 42, three, four, five days. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm really pleased with the program and pleased to be abstinent. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I was just listening to something and it was really good. It was on Healing Humanity and it was with a, a girl. Her name was Lisa. And I don't remember what the name of her. She's, she's a Christian. Um, but she has a tremendous testimony. And she says in her, all her research and all, all disease comes from a fatty liver. And I'm like, Mm. really okay talk to me let me hear you know so I listened to her she said that three out of five children have fatty livers and wow. that all disease comes from there but the liver can heal and I thought mm -hmm. okay well this part's encouraging mm -hmm. so there was so much in there and um, I know she has a, co a coaching service and she's got some videos online and so on but um, let's see if I can just quickly find it. Just it's a very recent one that went up. <clears throat> just but um, maybe I can't quickly find it. But, but whatever. Uh, that's the right person. But what's her name? That's what I'm trying to get to. It's Lisa oh. something. <laughs> this is the one. See if I can get any information on her. It is this one. Coach Lisa, but who's she with? This is the one. This is a short. I don't see it on the short. I don't see her link. Anyway, she's a blonde with long hair. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't remember her name. But it was interesting. So all disease mm -hmm. coming from the liver because the liver is what's used to detox the body. Yep, I believe that. Yeah, so she has a, a detoxing protocol and um, her life and her husband's life was saved through this detoxing protocol. So I'm like plus many others that it's just been pretty amazing. So anyway, yeah, that's that story. But staying on your plan, whatever your plan is, is so important rather than getting, you know, drawn back into the lies. I know that's the deal. Get out of the lies, just... get out of the weeds and then stay the heck out of them. <laughs> that's right. Get out of the weeds and stay out of the weeds. Or get out of the sink sand, sinking sand, whatever it is. 
and get on the rock. <laughs> yeah. And um, we've we've got we've got Sally here. Now, last oh. time, when you were here last week, Sally, you were going to have surgery the next day. How did it go? Um, it it went on <laughs> in my first week of recovery. How are you feeling? Um, sore and achy and nauseous and oh. heartburn. Oh. Wow. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Sort of miserable. Do you, do you but, have to um, have any kind of special diet over. with this? What's that? Do you have any kind of special diet or something <laughs> to keep that heartburn down? No, the problem is that um, um, they, they stick, a, stick a needle in my veins to try to reverse the blood flow right. and push um, foam up and down yeah. the veins of my legs or leg. And um, so I have to wear these compression hose day and night for 28 days. I can take it off every 48 hours to shower. That's it. Day and night. Okay. And then, um, yeah. and I change them then. And um, to keep them firm, otherwise they start sinking. Oh, I use the thigh highs, right. but I, I have to wear these tight, they call yoga shorts. And they're tight on my legs to keep them the firm, the hose firm, but they're cut into my stomach. And, oh. um, you know, with heartburn, which I have anyways, but um, I can keep it under control. They always tell you don't wear anything snug around your middle right. and it just um even even cut the the waistband to try to loosen it but I, mm -hmm. I had to get some others because it then it's too loose and it doesn't hold up the hose oh yeah so it has to be tight enough and if it's tight just a little bit then it almost cuts more than if it's a wide tight yeah. so I mean, I'm just, I'm just complaining because I'm just miserable, mm. but that's. Oh, well, you're not comfortable, right? No. During this process. I mean, no. it's good to know it will be short. It feels long now, but it will be short. It's not yeah. forever. And I, and tomorrow will be one week done of the four weeks. So. Mm. Yeah. 25% yeah. of it is, is gone. Right. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Assuming they they give me the okay. Oh, there's Norma. There's Hi, Norma. Norma. Yeah. It reminds me of the end of school, Norma. I'm uh, not Norma. Uh, hi, hi, Norma. I get to you. Um, but Sally, it reminds me of the end of school, and I used to count down the days. <laughs> so you're counting down the days till you're all better, but you'll you'll slowly start to recover. So by next yeah, week, you'll I feel will. better than this week, and. And I will get there. You will. Yeah, I will. I'm yes. sure. Mm. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna see how Pat's doing. Let's go to Pat next. Pat, how did your week go? It went okay. It went fine. But um, I work with this gals on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and uh, uh, this um, this girl that was hired. Um, uh, she's a good worker and everything. And, uh, but for some reason, the boss didn't like her. And so he, she made it miserable. I mean, she's just come in and help me. Pat, whenever you need help, you just call me. I'll come in and help you. And she was so nice. And I feel so bad about her getting fired because, uh, the boss and her, his, her sister, they were some towel against her and she is gay she's gay but she's she's a wonderful person i'm sorry and uh she's a good person and uh so i'm a little upset about that just a little upset yeah. i learned that well, today yeah. i learned that today and mm -hmm. well, things like that bother me when somebody is is good hearted and everything and then you know they do something like that to her yeah, yeah. yeah so really from, what, from what you can see she was unju unjustly treated she yeah. was. She was. That's, oh, wow, that's not good. 
He was, and there was nothing I could do about it. Uh, the, bo the, the boss, the boss uh, above the boss, <laughs> you know, the mm -hmm. PR person. She knew about what was going on, and we just we just get minimum wage. You know what I mean? We're not making a lot of money, and I'm thinking, right. son of a gun. You know what I mean? Uh, it's 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 really it's, as you can see, I'm upset. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah. well, good for you, Pat. Good for you. <laughs> and I think we've talked about that quite a bit, that, you know, we stand up for those that are being unjustly treated. Yes, yes. Or for those that are disenfranchised in some way, the have-nots. Right. Have yeah. Right. The yeah. people that were dealt a, a, a bad deal. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I used Sometimes to take her home. I used to drive her home bus. when she needed a ride home. You know, she took the bus to get in there and it took her so long to get home. So I used to drive her home every once in a while, you know, because she was a good girl. She was a good person. Oh, yeah. It's on, yeah. I'm sorry. That's what's on my mind. <laughs> well, remember to pray for her that she's something yes. better is going to open up for her. Yes, that's but what I told really, her. That's what I told her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, do you want to work for a company that's going to do things like that? Right. I had yeah. to talk with her. That's exactly what I said, Kathy. Right. I said something, you know, because I learned that in my life. You know what I mean? When you're having a hardship, uh, you know, uh, getting out of it and, you know, moving on. And, and usually it is better. It, usually it is better. Circumstances, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Than being tortured. Offerings for and, her. And for, all, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say you could be a really good you'll be a really good reference for her for her next job. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I gave well, her I my hope, card. I hope that comes for number, her you know. soon. Pardon? I hope that comes for I hope that comes I, for her I soon. I hope so too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. She was very unjust. I never came across anything that extreme to tell you the truth in my life. You know, so that's why it's yeah. bothering me. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes something is happening behind the scene that we're not aware of. Right. But from what it's sounding like, that right. might not be why she was let go. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But like you say, I have to look positive, too. Thank you for reminding me what I said to her. <laughs> you know, yeah. she's going to. Yeah go into something better. So I'll have that in mind and get over this bitterness I have in me now because I don't like to be that way. Mm. No, not mm. at all. But it's her journey and you're there to support her. And I'm glad you're there for her, Pat. Oh, thank you. Thank and you. And whatever happened with the employer, that's that's right. on them. That's, that's on, on them. Whatever yeah. they did, whether it was just right. or not just, that's on them. Yeah. But um yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Norma. So, Norma, Hi, Kathy. tell us a yes. little bit about yourself. <laughs> you know, Kathy, I had met you and on the ARC, actually. Yes, and, I've met um, you before. Yes, yes. So I just want to come, come on in here and say hello today because I have a women's leaders meeting in just a few minutes. Oh, but okay. um, I wanted to say hi, and hopefully I could join you for the next one. Yeah, well, I'm glad you could pop in. On Thursday evenings, we're all, we go through my book, The Kingdom Way, but we always talk about life a little bit. And we do a number of things. Sometimes we just pray for each other. Sometimes there's praying for some big needs. As we've got some big needs happening there in Florida now. Mm -hmm. um, but it just, everything is different every week. That's all. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. I look forward to meeting with you all uh, three Thursdays. I mean, the third Thursday of every month, right? No, every Thursday. Oh, every, every Thursday. Thursday. Mm -hmm. And, and actually, it's perfect timing because we're just about to start the book again in the next we week right. or two or so. Right. Oh, okay. So it's perfect timing. The book is fabulous, The Kingdom Way. Yes. I know. I went through some of it with Kathy, um, but yes, I would definitely like to start the book over. Yeah, you would sounds fit good. in right, right. You would fit right in here, Norma. Well, yeah, thank you so much. Good, you all have a great evening. Hello, Melanie. You too. <laughs> Thanks for popping by, Norma. <laughs> all right. See you soon. Bye. God bless. Bye bye. 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 Does anyone want to share anything else before I actually open this book up? We're on the last chapter. Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay. 
So the last chapter, and I don't remember where on the last chapter, I know that we talked about the excuses. That was chapter one. So all our excuses are gone. I remember seeing the cheesecake that's in the picture. How could I forget that? <laughs> what about vision boards? I think we talked about that too. Having yeah, a vision, keeping your vision mm -hmm. before you, having a vision board is great, but it could be just a word. It could be a sticky note that you keep before you, your mission mm -hmm. statement, all that kind of stuff could be in there. But uh, having a vision before you about those lies, that mm -hmm. little Mr. Sly is always trying to lie. And he lies to you about your portions. He lies to you about your identity. You know, oh, I'm no good. I'm never going to make it. All this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. I can't do it. All that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. All lies. And um, did we, I, I think we talked about that. I think we've left off at our garden. Did we talk about the lies? Yes. Right. You think so? Portions, yes. And uh, guarding your garden. I'm thinking this might be where we left off. Mm -hmm. Does that maybe sound about right? I mean, if I was smart, I'd write this down, but that doesn't necessarily always happen. <laughs> anyway, I'll put that down there for a second. Continuing to keep I, your I garden. I have this on page 140, week 12. Well, it's week 12. We got that, but the numbers here are different. Okay, yes. yeah. So I'm not sure. Do you know um, what the heading or the title was where we left off? Um, the they subjects? overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Revelation mm. 12, 11. I don't remember any of these. You don't remember these? Eh? I don't remember these the pictures. You don't, eh? See if that's up there a little bit. No, that's right at the very, very top. See, they overcame by the blood, blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. That was just um, the yeah. scripture for this entire chapter. Right. Right. I think we looked at excuses are gone. <laughs> we looked at the vision board. No more mm -hmm. lies about the portions that we have, which is right. an earlier mm -hmm. chapter. Like we're just reviewing the actual book, all of the chapters. Mm -hmm. So we did cover that. I think, oh, here. It's colored. I did mark it. How about that? Next, we looked at <laughs> our garden that's there. Guarding your garden. And food choices. This is where we left off. We've got it marked. I'm yeah. impressed. Mm -hmm. I don't always yeah, do that. I remember because you ended okay. by about having, um, you know, music playing or scripture being read in your home um, on a regular basis. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And that was definitely in the last one, the garden. That's yeah. right. Because it changes the atmosphere. The actual molecules in the air will change. If you're playing uh, scripture yeah. in your home 24 seven, it changes the atmosphere. That's why when you walk into a home, you can sense what's been happening there. If they were mm -hmm. playing wild Rocky music or something, you're going to feel it um, like kind of demonic mm -hmm. stuff. If somebody had a fight in that room before you walked in it, you're going to feel it. It actually changes the, the molecular structure of the air. It changes. It's like the experiment that was done, which I we, we have in this book, on the water, on water crystals. When you speak to the water, if you speak positive things, if you speak blessings to the water, the water molecules will look beautiful, well-formed and everything. But if you curse them, they will look distorted. The actual water molecules. <clears throat> well, air is not much different. We have a lot of moisture in the air and in our bodies. It also changes our bodies. So that is in one of our chapters. So you'll feel it. So setting up your home. So it's in, has the atmosphere for God's presence. Oh, I'm trying to use a mouse with my hand and I have help with a cat, a cat helping me, <laughs> of course. This is not new. <laughs> so next, we're looking at our food choices. And I know you all have a plan, but even within your plan, there's certain things that you either like or you're drawn to or things that you just probably don't eat. 
even though it's allowable or permissible. So life is made up of one choice after another. In regards to eating, consider each one of your choices when options are available, which they usually are in this country. We have lots of options. So choose the one that will bring you closer to your goal and closer to God. Even if you go somewhere and you kind of have to choose something, um, stay as close as close to whatever the plan is. Whatever's going to bring you closer to the truth, closer to God. The one that will lead you to life, not death. So that's what we're <laughs> eating for. We're eating for life. Mm. So when we think of processed foods or whole foods, which one leads you closer to life? Mm -hmm. right the ones that right. are are filled with life they have all of the the natural things that god has placed there as just real food real natural whole food so the one that will lead to life not death stay within the boundaries that god gives you and the leading of his spirit and you'll accomplish great things in this life and receive a just reward when you meet the Lord face to face. This is um, actually kind of cute. So we've got this guy here and he says, stay far from me, you wicked, wicked temptress. And he's speaking to his fridge or the things that are in his fridge. <laughs> so he says, oh baby, you know, I have what you desire. I've got pizza, I've got ice cream. Mm -hmm. That's his <laughs> fridge talking to him. It's like, we hear these voices. So you got to, Flee the tempter. And that's actually sort of a, it's quite a paraphrase, but the, the concept is coming from 1 Timothy 6, 11. Mm -hmm. Next, we looked at Pharaoh. So Pharaoh, Pharaoh, let my people go. It actually comes from a song. And another cartoon. Why are you still here? I thought the governor pardoned all the prisoners. The guard says he did, but some of them won't leave. So what's that saying to us? Why are you still here? I thought the governor pardoned all the prisoners. The guard says he did, but some of them won't leave. So the guy is staying in his sin prison. Mm-hmm. That's because God's already forgiven us. We're free. We've been pardoned. He's forgiven all of our sins, all our trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that were against us, which was contrary to us. And he took it out of the way, nailed it to the cross. The door is open. We can walk right out, out of the prison. We don't have to stay in any trap of any kind of addiction because we've been set free. All we have to do is walk in the freedom. Mm -hmm. But so course, it the lungs, what's it that? Shows, it shows the mindset. I mean, we're free, yes. but the mind mm -hmm. has that's right. that mm -hmm. signal. That's right. Yeah, and the nervous that's system why we, is still addicted, and it, it's a powerful thing. Yeah. That's why we have to renew our mind daily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got to remind ourselves that, hey, you're free or three You're and four impressed. times and absolutely and again too you know when we think about when the north won the 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 civil war and the black slaves were set free this is what it reminds me of too they were free but they didn't know how to walk right in it. right you know they right. were free where are they gonna go because right. they, yep. they had to learn to live all over again they did leave, though. I mean, they, the, the idea that they stayed is they did leave. And and then there were programs set up, but right, just to open the doors without plans, the yeah. same way as to open the door for us saying, you know, we can give up all our sweets, but there's no plan to do it. Right. Has and to it's be like planned. this with, with people who are living... Um, say in the streets too or in certain lifestyles you know you can take them out of that lifestyle 
but you can't yeah. take the lifestyle out of them. Right. Yeah. It's a process. And it that's true of every one of us. Um, yep. I can, I can let go of the foods that I love, mm -hmm. but it's, it's easier said than done. Absolutely. And because we have the freedom to do something doesn't mean that we're actually even fully capable of it. Well, we're not capable by ourselves. No. Right. But through Christ, we are capable. And it's the liar that's telling us you're not capable. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Christ isn't enough for you. See? Right? That's his lie. And he's the father of all lies. He's going to play on that. He's going to say, you may as well just stay in the prison because, you know, really, you know, that's all those lies. They come to us all the time. And it's hard. Well, first of all, we have to discern what it is, what that mm -hmm. voice is. Right. Whose voice is it? And are we going to listen to that voice or are we going to listen to the voice of truth? Mm -hmm. well, I think right. sometimes, I think sometimes, uh, I call it negative self-talk. And uh, yeah. you say it so many times uh, before you recognize that you can change. So this negativity yeah. always shows up until you catch it. I used to say catch it and turn it into a positive. And every yeah. time you say that, catch it and turn it into a positive. You know, yep. because we're able to change our minds. Uh, we absolutely can. Now, we've developed these sort of ruts, you know, mm -hmm. like mud from a truck. It's been um, put in there in our brains throughout these neural pathways through that negative talk, that negative mm -hmm. self-talk, as you're saying. Absolutely. Right. And you're saying, catch it and change it. Right. You know, turn absolutely. it around. Right. And Kathy, I believe that that goes through all levels. I know in, in our yes. um, Bible study, we were looking at the where the bridegroom asked people to dinner and they didn't come. So he said, go out and ask the people in the streets. Right. And Noah was saying how um, next time you have a dinner party, there's a lot of wealthy people in the church and this particular, um, you know, ask people your you're not used to having he didn't say the homeless per se but people that you're not used to socializing right. with that don't maybe look like you and talk like you and all and one woman said but i don't want to have a dinner party she said it i don't want to have a dinner party with them and <laughs> so a lot of people thought it but she she actually said it and noah the priest said well that's sort of the point and um but her mind told her these people are different. They'll probably steal my silverware. Um, you know, she she wasn't going to get out of her prison, her dark thoughts. Mm -hmm. So we all have them. We do. We all have them and we all have biases. And it's too bad because it was such an opportunity there. Remember the verse that says, you know, you, you could be entertaining angels unawares. Absolutely. It was that the was... first thing that my my supervisor, who was, you know, very devout evangelical Christian when I wasn't anything. Um, the first thing he said to me is that a lot of these that I was in the, you know, the, um, the, the most severe warts, the most severe schizophrenics um, and violent. I had the most violent ward in the state. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, remember that you're entertaining angels unaware and that never ever left me wow. and 30 years of working there every wow. single person i met i really thought this could be it this could be jesus wow yeah yeah every person that you meet treat them all as as jesus wants you to treat them treat them all as if they are jesus right with that that love and they may not love you back they may that, spit in your okay. face. They may reject you. And that that's okay. And as Pat was saying, you know, when we get these, these negative thoughts and we turn it around, what we're actually doing is those ruts that we've got in our brain. The more you do that, you tend to, those ruts get less and less and less. Mm -hmm. And then you create this new neural pathway 
that right. the world is bright and beautiful. Right. And all those other things don't really matter. Mm -hmm. right? They're 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 meaningless. Mm -hmm. Because you've got your mind now, you've got the mind of Christ, and you want to keep those that good. You want to mm -hmm. keep that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, that is certainly my goal in life. I think everybody to walk, walk in the cloak of Christ. Yeah. To live, live as he did, to love as he did, to see people as he did. Yeah. I'm, I'm far from it, but that's my goal. Well, that's our you, you may be closer than all of us, Sally. But well, no, right, I don't Sally. think that, but but it's my goal. That's it, right. It definitely, and that should be our goal. That's our desire. It's our desire that we would walk with him. And he looks at the heart. He sees right. our desires. He knows what we want. And mm -hmm. as we call out to him, he does help us step by step. It's mm -hmm. just like an infant does not know how to to fly a plane yet <laughs> yeah. doesn't know how to soar but right. when they're when they're young right they mm -hmm. start with crawling and walking and so on like it's a process and just like mm -hmm. our life is a process too and we're becoming more and more christ-like if that's what we're choosing mm -hmm. in our life and it's right. definitely what god's choosing he's drawing us closer all the time even in mm -hmm. the times when we're not listening he's working the path to get I us believe that where we need to be mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. the most unlikely places sometimes the most unlikely places in fact it could be that person that you didn't want to invite to dinner if that woman only knew that <laughs> that could have changed her life around the very place you don't want to be just might be the place god wants you to be mm. yeah yeah so dear Pharaoh here for freedom, we are free. He doesn't want us to submit anymore to that yoke of slavery where we've got to do whatever that bondage is. Mm -hmm. Right. But if we do, it'll become more difficult to break free the next time. Every time we participate with that slavery, it becomes more and more difficult. <coughs> and it I have to remember it. that. Yeah, I really have to remember that. It's like and every time you do the opposite and you make the right decision, it weakens the slavery. Mm -hmm. To continue to do it is like positive reinforcement of the sin and it's right. Mm -hmm. It's also like saying, Lord, I do hear you. I know what you want, but I really don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> is the flesh is still ruling over the soul, the spirit absolutely right. that is true yeah but with addiction and we've talked about addiction itself right the the word addiction comes from the root word dictator so you've got the dictator telling you what to do the addiction is telling you what to do right and which makes us to be the slave we're listening to the dictator mm -hmm. it takes an average of 11 times to break an addiction 11 times with a really good plan mm -hmm. you're working it and but you fall yeah and then you get back on at some point and then you mm -hmm. fall and you're back on and you fall off mm -hmm. so it takes 11 times on average but we don't need I to feel like it's about 1100 times for me <laughs> <laughs> well remember that god forgives <laughs> if we have to give forgive people 70 times seven right daily in other words infinity God's right. there to forgive too. Mm. But it certainly does feel like that sometimes, Allie. Yeah. Yeah. We just don't want to deliberately tempt God and have that attitude of, I don't really care what you say. I'm going to do what I want. Right. <laughs> it's like a child would do that. I know sometimes we do fall, Sally. I know that. And, um, but the Lord's right there for you. He's always yeah. there for you. But most of us are there. Good. Most What's of us that, never Pat? quit, though. Most of us never quit. No, we, we keep that's on. Right. We keep on reinforcing, reinforcing, reinforcing. Even right, if it takes right. years, okay, we we reinforce. Yep. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. It says if you've surpassed the eleven times those eleven attempts, 
and you're even attempting for the 132nd time. Right, right. That's still okay. <laughs> yeah, you never that's gave up, okay. right? I agree. You never give up. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> God knows your heart. He listens to your cry. He's attentive to you. Mm -hmm. So apply the principles that are found in this book and continue. Continue to apply. Continue to mm -hmm. change your self-talk. Continue to, mm -hmm. you know, reframe things. Turn it around. Right. And if if you slip up or when you slip up, whichever, just get right back on track as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah, like when you're driving. Yeah. That's like when you're key. driving your car, if you have a GPS. So you're driving down the street, you miss the turn off. Right. So what does GPS do? <laughs> it reroutes you. Action, action, action. Change direction. Yeah. I love it. Turn around and get back <laughs> on track. That's what it tells you. And it tells you right away. So that's what we need to do. We've got to get our, our GPS connected. Right. So when we get off track, that it talks to us. The voice of the Holy Spirit talks to us and says, mm. get back on track. Just turn it around. Yep. Very good. I love that. Yeah, yeah. this book is the most down to earth of any any of the weight loss books. I mean, it's you know, it, it reaches high levels if you think of the, the religious aspect, but it's also very down to earth. Yeah, just it's practical it's real. real stuff. <laughs> real real stuff. stuff. So if we slip up, we get back on track with with God and what he's saying as soon as we can. Ignoring the devil, because we recognize his voice. He's just a liar. That's all he can do. It's the only thing he can do. He's the father of all lies. And how he lies, he always takes a truth and he twists it. There's always a little bit of truth in it. But that's how he gets us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, of course, any slip up you make, he's right there. He's the accuser of the brethren. He's like, oh, look at you. You messed up. Look at that. Look at that. Right? He accuses us. He's the accuser of the brethren. Or he reminds us, well, you failed 132 times. Like, come on. Right? <laughs> he reminds <laughs> us of what we've done in the past. Don't ever engage in a conversation with him. Just speak the truth. You can say, get thee behind me, Satan, and speak the truth into it. Yeah. Even, and don't let him grab hold of your head, your thoughts, right? Speak the truth in your thoughts. That term, you know, like to shut up, I don't actually use that term. But I do feel justified in using that when I was speaking to the enemy of my soul. That's, mm -hmm. that's one I don't mind saying shut up to. I agree right. with you. I agree. Right. You know? And he has to listen to the Holy Spirit that's in us. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. And bind that, that liar's mouth. Just shut up. Lord, what are you saying? Was get or get thee behind me, Satan, or tell him mm -hmm. to go where Jesus sends him <laughs> right. into the pigs, let them all drown. <laughs> God, on the other hand, has thrown our transgressions into the sea of forgetfulness as fast as lightning. Ah, uh, so he doesn't he doesn't remember that 132 or however many it was. It doesn't remember. He doesn't remember. He throws it away. It's gone. We confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins or our iniquities. Those transgressions that we have, they're gone. Ever confessed sin is gone forever. From the very nanosecond that you bring it to the Father through Jesus, you're free. You can't fail. The only failure, and Pat's already uh, spoken yeah. to this. The only <laughs> failure is to give up. Give up. Right? Never, never give up. Mm -hmm. 
And that's the one nice thing. None of you are given people that give up. Vision, I, purpose, and destiny. That's That was the next chapter. That was chapter seven. Right. So continue to walk out your mission statement. Remember, we wrote a mission statement for our lives. Absolutely. Keep it before you. Put it on a sticky note. Put it on your computer, wherever you're going to see it, on your fridge. Make it pretty if you want. And continue to walk that out. It will develop. It will open up opportunities and doors for you that you never thought possible. You simply need to say yes when those doors open. And watch and see how the Lord will do mighty exploits through you, a willing vessel that's wholly committed to the Lord. Wow. That gives and me here chills. On, and this hand, you know, we've got here the father's hand reaching down to the child. For I, Jehovah, your God, and grasping your right hand, the one saying to you, do not be afraid. I myself will help you. That's from Isaiah 41, verse 13. That's what God is saying to each one of us, each one that's listening today. I, Jehovah, your God, am grasping your right hand. The one that's saying to you, do not be afraid. I myself will help you. Many circumstances will happen in life. And this is what we're, when you're trying to beat addictions of any kind, that's hard. But God says he's there and he will help. The next chapter was chapter eight that we looked at. And that, I don't know if that's chapter eight, that's chapter nine. So this must be chapter eight. Oh, there it is. Law and order. Mm -hmm. So the diet rules are the law. Stay committed to God in all time at all times. Choose wisely and stay attuned to his food channel. What he's choosing for you. And he'll guide you and lead you all in all truth in every choice that you make. Man's diets bring bondage. Now, if God has brought you to a plan and says, look, I want you to walk this way, then walk that way. Then that's then that's not bondage. But what has the Lord said to you? Listen to that still small voice speaking through your physiological hunger and satiety signals. Remember, we talked about the ghrelin. That's the hunger signal. That's mm -hmm. God saying, that means you should eat. You are hungry. Mm -hmm. But when you're satisfied, when you're satiated, that's God's voice saying, you've had enough. Mixing diet rules with God's way will dirty the water. So we can't take the law mm -hmm. and mix it with God has, God's order. It, it doesn't mix. Mixing those diet rules with whatever God, God's way um, contaminates it. Mm. But Kathy, and doesn't it our after years of overeating, don't we kind of overrule those satiety signals and they're not they're not really accurate for us. Okay, we have been we have been overriding them. But that's because we're we're not paying attention to them. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean we can't get them back. Mm -hmm. It comes yeah. back to the mindset. Right. So this is but why that take a while to get them back? It probably does. It probably does. And I did I did say that that if the Lord has led you to a plan then that's his voice for now. But start paying attention, even while you're in that plan, pay attention to, am I hungry? You know, okay. Am I safe? I do I feel safe? sometimes like bright line eating becomes something beyond what it should be. Okay. And if you feel that, then take that to the Lord and say, Lord, what are you saying about this? Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm kind of an idol so in grateful. itself. I'm grateful that you have bright line eating. Um, you know, that God led you there. But what is he saying to you specifically in that? And follow the Lord because that's who you're accountable to. You're not yeah, you know. 
right. So God's way does bring freedom. The laws of these diet rules, they can bring a real bondage. Right. It's sort of where I feel. Well, ask the Lord about that. Ask what he's saying about yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And you will be rewarded for your obedience to him, which is what you're looking for, right? And here we've just got a few verses. The first commandment, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your, all your soul, and all your mind. Right. Notice the word all. <laughs> and the second commandment, the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Right. And Matthew 22, 37 to 40, Jesus said to him, you shall love the, it's the same thing really, but it's in the New Testament again. Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. So all your soul, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions together. Right. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. The first great commandment sums up the first of the, the first four of the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, verses 3 to 8. And the second commandment sums up the remaining six of the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, wow. 12 to 17. I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chapter 9, love. Love covers a multitude of sins. And that's what God is. That's who God is. He says that he's love. He's like the perfect essence of love. That's how I describe him to people that don't know God. They don't know the Lord. He's the perfect essence of love. So how was this world created? This world was created out of love. Everything was created out of love. It's because of the fall that we have hatred and disease and all those other, um, all that other stuff. But love covers a multitude of sins. Be aware that people around you Mirrors that try to talk to you are tools of the enemy to discourage you. We can flip that easily through love. So what does God want us to do? He wants us to practice love. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And that, of course, brings me back to the, the story you were talking about earlier about the woman that didn't want to invite certain people to a meal. But we're to love them. It doesn't matter how they look how they smell, or anything else. Just love them. So pr speak God's truth to yourself in the mirror. Mm. This I remember in that chapter that we talked about that. Go to a mirror, literally go to a mirror and say, I love you to yourself. Wow. Look yourself right in the eye. That is hard. That's actually hard. Look you yourself know, in the eye. Yeah. There was an owner of Weight Watchers. I forget her name. She was the largest franchise owner of Weight Watchers. And she said, being you said that, she said when we'd have a meeting with all the people that worked, you know, in our area, she said, every morning I wake up and I say, I wish I could remember her name. I'm sorry. Uh, you are That's beautiful. Okay. You are wonderful. You can do yeah. anything. She, she, that's what she said to us. I'll never forget that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and do that. Go to the mirror. Talk yeah. to yourself and start yeah. telling yourself who you are. Right. Say right. those positive things to yourself. Mm -hmm. We can easily say that to someone else, can't we? Mm -hmm. Yes. We can mm -hmm. Look at, at someone else and say those things. But what about you? Jean Nightage. No, not Jean Nightage. It wasn't that's an originator of Weight Watchers. I'm that's sorry. Okay. I thought I thought of her name. Sorry. Yeah. So, yeah. so look in the mirror and start yeah. saying these things yeah. to yourself. Say those loving things mm -hmm. to yourself. I can do this. I am successful. I am worth it. I am worthy. Mm -hmm. I, I am, am the daughter the of the king. Beloved. Yeah. Go ahead, mm -hmm. Sally. I missed you. 
Sally, did you say something? Oh yeah, just no. I am the daughter of the king. I'm a do I'm the daughter of the king. Mm -hmm. Right. All of those affirmations. Start saying them to yourself yeah. in the mirror, so you can see yourself. Mm -hmm. Eye to eye. I always like this saying that you can see right here. Don't judge me by my past, because I don't live there anymore. Ah, oh, that's great. Yeah. Right. That is great. Yeah, that is. Yeah. I love that. And first Peter 4, 8 says, above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. And whatever it is that helps you stay focused on the greatness of God at all times, focus on that. Mm -hmm. Praying without ceasing. That doesn't mean that you have to walk around you know, mumbling something all day long, but in your heart, you're talking to the <laughs> Lord. Give thanks in all circumstances. Doesn't matter what's happening. So, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We're not necessarily thankful for the circumstance, but we're thankful in the circumstance. There's a big mm -hmm. difference. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Not, not for, but are, in. Mm-hmm. But in it, while you're yeah. in it, that's right. Mm -hmm. Not that's really for good. it. You may not be grateful that your, you know, basement flooded, or for unfortunately for some people they lost their whole house. You're definitely not grateful for that, or, you know, right. Giving thanks for that. Oh, thank you, Lord. Everything's gone. No, of course not. But in the midst of it, you're great. You're thankful. Thank you, mm -hmm. Lord, that you spared my life. Yes, I'm here. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. thank you, Lord, for whatever positive thing that you can find mm -hmm. in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. That's what they're Next. doing in North Carolina. I, yeah. I have been watching a lot of that for the last few, well, ever since it happened. And there's a real revival brewing in uh, in that area. And there's been hundreds baptized and they're giving God all the thanks and the people of of the states that are coming on board to help them. It's just been an amazing outpouring down there. And they're predicting that there's, there's more going to be more deaths there than there was uh, at nine 11. Wow. You know, just a tremendous, wow. a tremendous, it's like a bomb dropped. It's like mm. the atomic bomb dropped on that state. And I don't know about your television, but there isn't much of it even broadcasted here and i was speaking with a woman in delaware today and and she's she's not seeing a whole lot either but there was a a real real disaster took place in in north carolina mm -hmm. and it's it's amazing to see what the nation is coming out to help them not the government but the people right right yeah. now the government yeah, i saw that too mm -hmm. yeah they're not there to help them mm -hmm. but I mean, it's just a, it's just undescribable the uh, the convoys that are going in there, right? And the rejoicing that they're doing that the people are doing is just incredible to watch. Mm -hmm. They've lost everything, you know. They were they were right. really they were hijacked, and uh, but they're they're strong people, strong strong people. I have in a the, friend, James, whose whole family lived in Asheville. Well, wiped out. So he gives me, you know, moment to moment updates on them. But yeah. it's, it's very sad. It is very sad, but it's in those times when times are really difficult that people yeah. turn to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, Absolutely. that's what they have, because that's what they appear to be doing. They really appear to be uh, turning into the Lord, and and He's answering. Yep. Yeah, He's and answering. So he's that's why a, when these horrible things happen, don't be afraid, because He turns them around. He works them for our good, even if we don't recognize it mm -hmm. immediately. We think, "Oh, that's just awful." In yeah. the natural, it's the worst thing that could ever happen. Mm -hmm. But if people's lives are turned to the Lord, it is actually he's turning those things for good. He takes the, he makes beauty for ashes. Yeah. Right. I love that. 
Well, that's what brought me to the Lord. You know, I would just love to be living in the flesh and in the world. And that that's what my goal was. And if it wasn't that he just kept bringing me down lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. And finally he said, okay, like Jonah, <laughs> like truly Jonah. Exactly. Okay, go. Good example. <laughs> Good example. Right. Yeah. And yeah. for many, many people, that's it. They come to like a point in their life there and they realize that, you know what? I need more than just me. Yeah. Absolutely. God really and does certainly, love. I, mean, I think that was the point of my addiction. I, I've always thought that is because yeah. it does get you to that point. I have a, a friend in, in my church who a, has a prison ministry and he sees that all the time in prisons. That um, when you were when you were brought down, um, mm -hmm. a lot of times that's that's who you're turning to. Yeah, absolutely. And you know the Lord's right there, ready to help. Yeah. He's right there. He'll bring the right people. He'll be there Himself. He's yeah. there. He's just waiting for us to say, "I want you." And I am sorry for what I've done. He goes to any and lengths to get us. He just goes to any lengths to get us. Right. Any yeah. any length. That's any right. Length. But that's he's chasing he me down. His goodness is chasing me down the street or whatever that song is. Okay. Yeah, when you think of Jonah, I mean, think of the depths. He actually yeah. went to the depths. Think of the depths that he that's went to. Right. Three, yeah. day, three days in a whale or big fish, whatever it was. Yeah, that's a stinky place to go. Yeah, so we get into some stinky messes sometimes. But yeah, God deliberately from them. We I sure trust I'm going to be spared that one. Yeah. <laughs> so let's take a moment and just pray, and mm -hmm. um, and then we'll be back again next week. And by next week, we'll definitely finish this chapter. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Father God, I thank you so much. That you take us from the stinky places. You take us from the places, Lord, where we've been the lowest of the low. And you take us to new heights in you, just level by level by level. We give you thanks, Lord, for what you've been doing in each one of our lives. And Lord, there are those that are still struggling. Those that maybe don't recognize you yet or recognize that you could be working in the circumstances. I thank you for those, Lord, that in the, in the last hurricane, Helene, Many of, many of them are turning to you. And I pray, God, that you restore all that the enemy has stolen, that you yes. cause the things that they have to be more beautiful than they've ever had before, but they would give you all the glory for it. Yes. And for those, Lord, going through this current, current Hurricane Milton, Father God, for your protection, especially for those that maybe weren't wise enough to evacuate, that you would be with them and uh, strengthen them. And Lord, for those that have um, that are in shelters, that the provision would be there, that they would recognize, Lord, that they need you Amen. and that they would turn to you too. Thank I thank you, you for each one here that's listening, mm -hmm. each one that's been in this meeting. And Lord, that you would strengthen them this week, continue to heal Sally, continue mm -hmm. to keep us on track with what you want us to eat or not eat. So, who you want us to reach out to and who who we don't need to reach out to mm -hmm. and show us lord that we are loved thank you that we are loved by you and that you want us to love ourselves too in jesus thank name you. amen thank you amen, amen. thank Homework you work this and, week and prayers you. for your daughter as well kathy yes yes have homework she? this week look in the mirror Mm -hmm. And start saying the things that God would say to you. <laughs> wow. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Have a good week, everybody. Yes, you all yes. too. Happy that Thanksgiving. Was, yes. It's lovely. Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, that's Canadian, right. Canadian Thanksgiving. Oh, is so it? Say, yeah, yes, it is. So what, you what day? Americans, uh, well, yeah. it's on Monday. So all you Americans, you can have an extra Thanksgiving just because you were here tonight. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks for Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Kathy. Bye -bye.